Hi, Hannah. How are you? Hi. So welcome back to Mother Daughter Land. Here we talk about everything related to being a human and how best to get through life happily. So my mom's name is Ying and she's the founder of Eastover Estate and Eco Village, a retreat center in Western Massachusetts. And my name is Hannah and I'm an artist, yoga teacher and astrologer. So what are we talking about today? <laughs> okay, I actually just came back from a vacation in uh, Florida and uh, uh but so I, did I oh yeah that's right yeah <laughs> but we you both went, did but we went to different places in yeah, Florida so you went to uh, Miami right and yeah we and you actually, went to Tampa yeah we actually went back to uh tennis and uh, golf resort that uh, when our kids were young and uh, we actually went there a lot especially when your brother was young right yeah we so, went there like every year yeah, so it was really nice because, you know, it was uh, uh, for your brother. He actually uh, hasn't been there for a long time. Uh, and so it was uh, really nice to go back and, uh, you know, uh, your brother and uh, our father really had a wonderful time. But anyhow, I actually had a deadline that I have to submit things to um, the environmental uh, agency. So I was under a lot of stress because of the deadline and also have to work with, uh, you know, uh, engineer to get the document together. And so when I was there, I didn't even notice. And actually, you know, besides of preparing for documents, I actually did a lot of wonderful work and nature work and, you know, meeting the birds and all of that. You know, I really actually had a good time and, uh, and all of that. But when I came back, I noticed that, you know, my back was really kind of like, you know, hurting and the upper back. And then I noticed, especially for in my case, was that, you know, my uh, bladder channel, which is starting from actually right in front of the eyes, through the head and to the back, going down all the way down to the right foot of the ankle. And, when and that's a Chinese medicine. That's a meridian. Yeah, the meridian qi channel, you know. Mm -hmm. And I especially noticed that because when I was on the airplane, I noticed that, you know, right side of my body was really hurting. And then I touched my right foot ankle, you know, next to that while the spot was really hurting. So then uh, it reminded me, oh, my goodness, you know, right? And so today when I went to the massage therapist, you know, and uh, my upper back was like, you know, it's like as if, you know, there was a steel plate, you know, like kind of like in between of the shoulder blade. It was just incredible because, you know, like actually I wasn't even noticed that until, you know, like you get home and you relax down and then you notice, my goodness, the body took a hit just because of the intense, you know, like a work and a deadline. Yeah. And I think that's often a thing that happens to everybody where like we're in this stressful situation and somehow our body takes it on and we don't notice until after, maybe even after the situation has passed that our body is like holding all of that tension in either a new way or a new injury, or, you know, if it gets really bad and chronic, then it can become some sort of disease, right? But I think that's a really common experience. Yeah, so in my case, I actually was uh, like an accidental, you know, like an injury. Uh, actually was, you know, immediately after I give birth to you, because you were born in December, and uh, I was, uh, the bed, you know, is right next to like an older uh, window and happened to be that window is facing the Northeast. So you have this Northeaster, you know, over the winter, you know, just breezes through of the older window. And I, so I got uh, like, you know, when you give birth, you know, the bones and joints, they are open. So then when you get this cold air coming into in, in the Chinese medicine, they, they, they say that, you know, that you, you get the cold into the body, you know, the dampness, they call it dampness and cold, you know, into the body. And of course, you know, I was young and didn't even pay attention. 
And it was years and years later when I went to go and take an MRI that, you know, from the MRI, you can see, you know, all of the muscles were all, you know, ringing up, you know, tangled together. And so mm-hmm. I think that's what they call the Western medicine, they call it arthritis, something like that. So like the neck has arthritis. So then of course is that, you know, over the years when you're driving, when you are under stress, this area like tighten up, you know, and because of that tighten up and the bladder channel is right from the point over here, you know, right? Go along the spine going down. And so just uh, over time, you know, it developed this, um, uh, somehow is that when you are under stress, you know, it just uh, reactivate like these kind of old things, you know, and it's just the body is right? so amazing, you know. Well, I think it's really like, I feel like it's, we can map it out much more specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, like the reason why certain old things get reactivated in certain mm-hmm. stressful environments, it usually has to do with each other. Mm-hmm. Like if this was a different kind of stressful environment, mm-hmm. I think it might be a different past injury or it might be something new that would come up in the body. Like for some reason, this is what triggers that exact thing in mm-hmm. your body, right? So we can actually look at the body in this much more sort of analytical mapping sort of way Mm -hmm. because like for example in Chinese medicine we have like the left side of our body is the yin side and then the right side of our body is the yang side so we can look at our relationships with like the masculine and feminine forces in our life and like try to understand you know that's just a very basic way of looking at it but if we try to understand more so like why this stress activates that part that side of our body that's mm-hmm. kind of an interesting way to approach things like that. I see. I see. Now, also is that, you know, we are about to enter a new Chinese year, right? And it's mm-hmm. going to be the dragon year. And the dragon year is the special, like, 60 cycle. I'm sure that probably also corresponded to astrology too, right? It's very different. Oh, yeah? It's different? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, so for the Chinese calendar, the 60-year cycle, so this is the, will be the dragon year beginning of the 60-year uh, cycle. So that's a, a, it's a big year, and uh, there's a lot of things related to that. But uh, okay, yeah. So for me, yes, it is true, like different things trigger, you know, different part of it. Um, and actually, before I went down there, I was paying a lot of attention to my stomach area. Because I notice is that when I'm under stress, you know, and a lot of the time it goes to where the stomach is, you know, and so the stomach really tightens up. So I've been paying a lot of attention to that, including of like, you know, not overeating. Overeating is one of the worst thing that can happen to stomach and spleen, you know. And so I've been really like doing this vacation I have been like really paying so much attention to like not overeat, even though, you know, when you go out, right, it's always there's good food, you know, tend to like overeat, right? So I was really paying attention to that. And I felt, oh, okay, I'm doing good, you know? (laughs) Well, it's always like a catch 22, right? Because we like think, okay, I know I'm going to be going through stress during this time. I'm going to pay attention to this and make sure that I'm super healthy in this way. We end up micromanaging something that like, like, what are we doing? We're just make we're putting more stress on ourselves, right? To think about stuff like that. So I think a big thing about like, since we're talking about the body, a really big thing to understand that helps us sort of de-stress and release a lot of the anxiety about our body is that Mm -hmm. our body is a part of nature like it knows what's going on it knows the cycles that it goes through it knows how to heal itself it knows how to manage things like stress Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. like we don't need to be so hyperactive (laughs) in understanding it and we can if we can accept that and if we can flow with the seasons and the cycles that our bodies go through Uh then I think we could feel more content in this body as a human in this lifetime 
Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, I kind of like, uh, yes, you know that I was born kind of like, you know, with my stomach really, really flexible. You know, I used to like, I can eat anything and I can eat as much as I want. And also any kind of food I eat, I always digest well. So I would never pay attention to my stomach, you know. So the stomach issue, it didn't really show up until actually, you know, about three years ago, you know, when I ran uh, five, five years ago, ran into the issue, you know, uh, with uh, our sewer plant. But anyhow, so that was the start of the uh, stomach issue. And then for the last few years, I basically, I'd never been to the doctor, actually. I basically through, you know, meditation, you know, aware of, oh, okay, you know, when the stomach is not comfortable, then I thought, okay, what kind of stress that I'm dealing with, you know? So just from like paying attention to that. And then, so finally I felt like, oh, okay, now I feel my spleen and stomach is feeling good now. So that is why. Now, actually this uh, bladder issue, I never paid attention also. Uh, before I, uh, I I have a chronicle, you know, kind of a run in the family kind of gallbladder issue. And I had a gallstones that I found out 20 years ago, but I'm, that's more of like an inheritance. So I always paid attention to that. But this is something actually really new. I never even, you know, noticed this until, you know, the last uh, one or two times, then I began to see, oh, okay, it's not a simply just a gallbladder issue, you know, actually there's this issue too. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've recently been spending a lot of time managing my health and like having to go to different doctors <clears throat> for things. Actually, a lot of stuff was revealed to me. It seems nowadays, like when I've gone to the doctors, um, They've actually been a lot more holistically minded uh -huh. since I've gone recently, or like uh -huh. compared to like even three or four years ago. Now mm -hmm. I go and they have, I don't know if it's just the ones I'm going to now. They're uh -huh. much more holistically minded. They're much more thinking about things as a whole rather than just treating certain symptoms or whatever. So actually uh -huh. a lot of my health things have like worked out from doing things that doctor have told doctors have told me about recently uh -huh. so that's kind of interesting to think about I think the world is shifting just with how much information is out there now like if yeah. you have doctors that are really interested in actually understanding mm -hmm. what they're working with mm -hmm. then like you get this you know I mean it's very rare that I've gone to a doctor that knows more than me. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> so that's been good recently, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good, that's yeah. a good turn. Yeah. And uh, talking about that, you know, I also want to mention recently, uh, I've been kind of a pretty ignorant just because probably, you know, uh, my body usually is pretty uh, adaptable, you know? And then also is that, I always thought that I ate very healthy, you know, so I never paid attention, you know, I know, of course, when your stomach is not 100%, I began to pay attention, why, you know, right? So, and then, uh, so in the past, you know, I was always, when you think about the spirituality, the number one thing I always thought about is that, well, who am I, you know, I need to understand that, you know, <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, now, nowadays, actually, I'm much more relaxed, you know, and I also come to realization really is that every person, whether you people know or not, naturally, they are on a path, you know, whatever way it is, you know, so I'm much, much, much more relaxed on that part. But then, you know, uh, when I paid attention to, you know, even like what I eat and all of that in the past, I thought I ate really healthy. I literally, I thought in my head, you know, I've been a vegetarian or pectarian, you know, pescatarian, for, pescatarian mm -hmm. you know, for the last 30 years, you know, right. But recently, you know, I began to uh, hear some of the uh, workshops by Taoists. And then I found, Oh my goodness, how little that I know, <laughs> you know, because the Taoists, you know, they are so in touch with the nature, you know, and for example, one of the things that he was talking about is that um, 
whether people you know eat meat or not, right? So for me, because I twenty something years ago, you know, I tested out, I had a gallstones and I had a pain, and so I changed it to like not eating meat because. Uh, when that happened, it was because of the chicken that I ate. I ate too much chicken, you know, right? So I stopped eating meat, whether it's red meat or white meat, chicken or anything I don't eat. But I continue to eat the seafood. And then when I was hearing the Taoist and the person was saying, you know, the seafood, like, for example, you know, shrimp and these things, they are actually, they are really yin food they are like really you know like cold food for the stomach you know mm -hmm. and uh, it's a lot of coldness actually coming from that and then I say oh now it's understandable because I've been avoiding eating you know like grass fed you know like animal mm -hmm. meat which is actually much more healthier than seafood you know but I didn't know I only found right. out now but it also depends on <clears throat> what your own like body's inclination is in mm -hmm. terms of like if we're talking Chinese medicine, like do you currently do you run warmer? Do you run cooler? You're saying you run cooler. So adding lots of cool foods to your diet is actually hurting you. Is that right? Yeah, like a. Like actually, before I hear from the Taoists, I already noticed, like, for example, I noticed is that let's say previous night I ate the shrimp. And then after I after the meal come home, I will really have a pain, you know, around the area of the spleen and stomach. I began to think, wow, this has something to do with the shrimp, you know, right? But then, of course, I do not know why, you know, I always in my head, I thought, Okay, you know, seafood is not counted as meat. You know, lots of people, you know, like they 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 do this. You know, they don't eat meat, they don't eat beef and chicken, but they eat the seafood. You know, right? Right. And yeah, yeah. and then so for for my case, uh, you know, definitely, you know, the information just came by really confirms also my feeling of you know that the shrimp was really not you know. Um, for me, it wasn't a good, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's all really interesting. And I think another interesting thing about that story is that we always tend to like get the information that we need mm -hmm. about our bodies and what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like as long as we're aware, there's so much information that's just next to our path as we're going through our path. Yeah. That, like we just glean over time because it's, just presented to us yes exactly it's like uh, you know that um it really all comes down to is that you know what's your focus and what your attention right when you begin to pay attention to something and then you know the right information always just exactly flows to you <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah 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 mm -hmm. And then the other thing was like, you know, eating seasonal food, how important that is. Like, for example, the Taoist was taking an example of apple, you know, right? We always hear from people, even the Chinese have a saying, you know, uh, one apple a day, you know, keeps uh, all of the disease away. You know, there's rhymes like this, right? So for every one of us, you know, we always thought, okay, apple is always the kind of fruit you, you can always eat. You know, it doesn't matter any time. You know, apple is good, you know, right? But actually, it's so interesting. In the old Chinese, the word for apple actually is that it means it's like the, the um, um, it's, it's somebody robbing you um uh, that that uh, grows in the forest apple that's how the word apple is it's not well, the way guo. yeah pingu exactly pingu. but uh, but the pingu wasn't like the word wasn't written like this called the pingu you know okay yeah so it me means actually it's 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 a fruit that steals from your body you know and then so it, why do apples steal from our body? Yeah. And then it further explain why is that it says that, you know, like apple, actually the only time when you eat the apple is like a four, which is good. 
And the apple has a characteristic is that when you eat the apple, it somehow it shrinks of the channel where the qi passes through. Close the channel. Yeah. So so for other time of the year, you know, like I say, our children, you know, the, the parents, you know, always tell their children to eat the apple. These children tend to eat that the qi channel becomes very, very narrow, like, you know, closed, not open for the qi to flow, you know. And then, but in the, in the fall, it's good. That's also the time that the apple ripes, you know. And then you eat the apple. It close up the qi channel a little bit because in the winter, you want to really kind of like, you know, close yourself in and not so open to the environment so that you can accumulate in the winter, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So winter is good, you know? And so... I thought, oh my goodness, you know, these kind of things, if it wasn't that I hear from the person and then, you know, he presented of, you know, a text written by, you know, the Chinese medicine, you know, doctor, the famous one that, you know, published the books, uh, had the books about the Chinese medicine, the originally, you know, and all of that. But you never thought about that, you know? And then, of course, he talked a lot more about like, just, you know, like how, that food is uh, the Western way of thinking, you know, oh, I just get the food from this and that. Everything is labeled as nutrition wise, you know, how much of, you know, this potassium, how much is this and that, you know, totally disregard has nothing to do with the seasonality. You have no idea, you know, the source of these uh, vitamins and this and that, you know, we have no idea, you know, and actually is that, it's it's not necessarily that suitable for our body. You know, I was very, very well, surprised. However, there's definitely, there are certain supplements that are like proven to be very good for us all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I noticed you, like, you, you use the one that they came from like the uh, natural ingredients, right? Yeah. Well, I don't just mean that. I just mean like, I'm pretty sure like 80 or 90% of people now are, deficient mm. in vitamin d mm -hmm. you know and like there's just so many of these things that like like people it, it's not really a matter of like you should just live completely by nature because mm -hmm. now we do have lots of information on mm -hmm. what actually is helping us and what actually can be good for us Mm -hmm. that we didn't know before right that we didn't know yeah. back when Chinese medicine was the only thing that was going on yes, in yes. China whatever right yeah. so I don't know I I do also think that a big thing like some a way that I approach food now is really just by eating by intuition like mm -hmm. I find that our body is really just if we pay attention we will know what we need just mm -hmm. by listening to our cravings you know listening to what what is it that I'm trying to get out of food right like there is a you can follow intuitive eating and like that usually will be relevant to seasonality mm -hmm. but uh, about uh, our desire to eat or, or feel like what to eat that has a lot to do with uh, whatever bugs that are in your intestine though like, okay, so yeah, like, for example, you know, some people, you know, they just love to eat the meat. That's because when they were young, that's they ate a lot of meat so that their intestine, right, you know, that's how they formed their their microbiome, you know, and then so like, you know, yeah, like, but I'm not talking about that. Uh -huh. I'm talking more about like, okay, let's say I'm having a craving for meat. And mm -hmm. I'm understanding like, maybe I'm craving protein right mm -hmm. and I can choose to eat protein in a different way than mm -hmm. if I'm just like I'm craving you know Taco Bell meat right <laughs> like you you can think about it in a way to really understand your body right and then you you test things over time it's uh -huh. like if I'm if I'm craving meat and I'm going to think about it as protein and then I'm going to eat you know, tempeh or something and see if that uh -huh. actually satiates that craving, then uh, that tells yeah. me something about myself and understanding how my biology is working, right? Like, like, 
you can come to sort of play with things and experiment and understand because it's just like when you're craving sugar, when you're craving mm -hmm. something sweet, you're mm -hmm. actually craving fat, right? Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. if I go and I eat avocado toast instead mm -hmm. and see if that satiates it, then I understand, right? And and you get used to seeing things like that and also understanding them intuitively. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I think what the biologists are saying is that they are saying is that most of the time when you're craving for a certain food, it is not really that you are craving for. It's more of, you know, the bugs in your in your. But that's your microbiome. That. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, I know, I know. That's... I'm I'm only bringing this up is that, you know, for certain people, let's say is that, you know, they really have very high cholesterol or, you know, other problems, high blood pressure and have chronic problems. But because that they are not paying attention of their, you know, guts, you know, right, that they have so used to, you know, like not unhealthy food, and then they couldn't really say, you know, by desire, you know, changing of that diet, you know, sometimes it, it, it is because of that, the buildup of the intestine, it's the bugs in the intestine that are, you know, craving for unhealthy food. These are the time I think that this will help with the <clears throat> tea uh, with the doctor or, you know, coaches that can help them to adjust, you know, to change. Like, for example, for me, right? When I had the gallbladder, you know, attack, and then I changed to eating vegetarian. But, you know, when I changed to vegetarian, not eating any meat at all, I was like, my immune system dropped so badly. I was really sick for like three months constantly. And then I found the green juice, you know? And then the green juice immediately boosted the nutrition and then also changed that what I what kind of food I'm craving for. Like once you start to eat some of the green juice, you really definitely, you know, not craving for like meat and things like that, you know, because your body yeah. immediately adjusts to that. Well, yeah, this all makes sense. But I also don't think <laughs> anybody that's going to like listen to this, it, like mm -hmm. most likely the people that are listening to this are pretty, you know, wanting to be healthier or something, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, so my mind, my mind is very like, okay, let's say you already relatively healthy, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm a person that takes a million supplements a day. And I, you know, take all different kinds of probiotics, right? And I whatever drink kefir I guess okay so like the whole idea here is like you can shift first of all you can shift your microbiome uh -huh. second of all like I definitely also go through bouts of like okay if I eat a lot of takeout then I'm like what's the next thing I'm craving oh more takeout well of course you know but the moment <laughs> that I shift and I start eating I don't know salads again then I'm like uh -huh. craving more and more salads right yeah. so that's just like, okay, am I viewing things black and white? What's unhealthy? What's healthy? But I'm saying you can shift the way that you think about foods, right? Like mm -hmm. you can shift the way into being like, you know, can I think about things in terms of nutrients? Can I think about things in terms of what am I craving? And then making a conscious decision about why might I be craving that, right? So if mm -hmm. the microbiome is really feeding into things, First of all, I'm like the biggest advocate for, you know, take probiotics. Yes, yes. Like take yeah. probiotics. Um, I don't know if you are eating lots of unhealthy food, like you probably should do like a candida cleanse or something. Like there's yeah. just so many things now that that you can do. And there's so many supplements that can help you yeah. to go through all kinds of different things. Yeah, yeah. Or just eating some, you know, like uh, um, vinegar. You know, helps a lot, yeah. you know, like apple right? cider vinegar. Yeah, apple yeah. cider vinegar in a salad, or, you know, when you cook food, saute food, add a little bit of vinegar, which helps a lot because it softens like the blood vessel too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or well, even just like <clears throat> herbal teas and stuff too. Yeah. Herbal tea. Like too. nettle tea and like, you know, there, I mean, we could go into a million different things with nutrition and health. Yeah. But, you well, know, everyone goes through it. Even, even I am like a relatively healthy person and I still, you know, there are definitely still imbalances in my body that I deal with and I mm -hmm. work through, right? Like you can't be 
a like a hundred percent healthy person <laughs> you just yeah. can't yeah because literally. this world is not made for that no look no, at no. how much you know pesticides are in everything now everything is is bad now right everything is not great for nature or yeah. for us right like we're yeah. a part of nature so yeah. there's no way to be 100 percent healthy you will always have to deal with your health it's just <laughs> like can you make it like, can you hopefully have it be bearable enough in your life that it's not going to be detrimental in a lot of ways yeah, for me, actually, my whole life, uh, I struggle with uh, taking uh, vitamins. So my whole life, I almost never took vitamins. Uh, and uh, only just recently, I began to take a little bit of vitamin. But even with that, I still struggle. I cannot be on a daily schedule taking vitamins. And I do not know why. Somehow, I just have a hard time with that. Even with forming though- habits. Yeah, even, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, I felt that I definitely probably lack of something, you know, that I should, you know, and, and then each time when I consciously taking, I still, I felt I have to force myself taking. (laughs) What is so hard about it? Like, is it just that you forget? No, I think that it really probably has a lot to do with that how I grew up, you know, always just taking natural food, you know, eating natural food, you know, and I grew up literally like a vegetarian, there was no meat, you know, occasionally there's a fish, you know, a river fish or whatever. And there's literally there's no meat at all, you know, until I was like, almost, you know, like came to United States. And, and I think that is why that you know, the gallbladder issue hit me so hard right away, you know, when I was eating chicken because, you know, the leftover chicken from you, you guys eat meat, right? We leftover chicken from you guys. And then I'm the kind of person I cannot see food being wasted, you know, so I ate a little bit too much chicken, you know, that's I got the gallbladder, you know, attack, you know, because mm-hmm. I grew up, didn't have meat, you know, so so for me, it's just very, very hard for me, even with the most healthy, you know, vitamin came from natural, you know, resources, I still have a hard time with that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I mean, know. I don't, I don't know, know whether is it because my, my body don't need it? I don't know. It's very weird. <clears throat> I mean, do you just feel like you don't need it? Do you feel like, like, I don't know what it could uh, be. I do feel more energetic, you know, and then also in the vitamin mix, you know, that you kind of mix it for us and, uh, you know, it has a probiotic, you know, it has, you know, like uh, a calcium, which that I believe because I don't, you know, uh, how to say is that I felt I probably, you know, definitely probably have, you know, deficiency of calcium, but of course, you know, my, my bone structure is okay, but I felt like, you know, I'm having a lot of pain related to joints and things, you know, and, and, uh, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, in the vitamin, it has certain things and it's good for anti, you know, inflammatory, like for example, you know, it has, uh, you know, uh, 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 the the yellow uh yeah powder. curcumin Cur- or like the, yeah yeah right. from the turmeric yeah yeah the turmeric you know right I think that's anti-inflammatory you know right yeah yeah well that uh, vitamin but- mix is also like entirely vegan and like it is for like vegan people like so it should help you said you yeah, did yeah, feel yeah. more energetic that that isn't yeah. like a inclination to keep taking it yeah, yeah, yeah. I do feel more energetic. And also I uh like for example, is that like maybe because of the meditation, sometimes really is that I just have no like nothing come to my mind. Like let's just say, you know, I'm I'm talking to someone, right? And uh uh, uh you know, certain things that say, you know, like I should, you know, spontaneously able to talk. But then it will appear to me as if I just nothing, like just totally blank. <laughs> it's like very interesting, you know. <laughs> yeah, nothing comes up. It's very weird. 
<laughs> you know <laughs> what is, what wait what does this have to do with the vitamins uh i think is that when i take that then it does not happen somehow oh, you feel more energetic like you don't you're not as blank and you like yeah that. yeah isn't that weird you know it's probably the b complex that makes you feel more energetic uh -huh. and b vitamin b is like such a big thing that a lot of vegetarians and vegans they have trouble getting enough of because most of it comes from meat yeah like and that's B12 like the brain and things function. like that yeah. yeah yeah right like a b12 and things like that what you yeah. need to eat is nutritional yeast then uh-huh like if i ever feel tired or lagging uh -huh. actually i do today i'll probably have to like I'll just go and like eat a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Really? Because it has so much vitamin B in it. Oh. So that's a big thing for like for vegans and vegetarians to eat. Yeah. It's really, really good for that. I have these things on the counter, but I just yeah. never use it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that it has a lot to do really with like old habits, like the way that we grew up, we're just not used to these things, you know? So my whole life, you know, I really never actually really ate, you know, vitamins and things, you know, only just now I began to pay a little bit attention, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so anything uh, interesting in Florida? Um, I don't know. I think went to Miami. Miami. Right? Yeah, it was fun. There's lots of art in Miami, so that was good. Mm -hmm. and I don't know it was good we just explored and ate lots of different foods uh-huh yeah. yeah we actually went to St. Petersburg yeah yeah we also went to Sarasota mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty over there what did you think about Sarasota uh well we only went to the Ringling Museum mm -hmm. which is very very nice but besides of that, we didn't have too much time to really look at anything else, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, I believe, so actually when I arrived at St. Petersburg, um, you know, by the, by the dock, you know, and um, my body immediately feels energetically is like, there's a lot of like, come and go, like, lots of like energetic kind of like you know um unsettling you know like there's an energy that's very unsettling that's well, i think now is the time like winter time is the time that they have the most tourists and mm -hmm. i think it is a very like tourist based place i'm pretty yeah. sure yeah yeah very and then you know you have all these restaurants to set up for the tourists too mm -hmm. you know, that right yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so that's basically how we felt yeah mm -hmm. but uh um besides of that i mean weather wise you know it's uh much warmer but uh, wow so many highways i know yeah right yeah. yeah everywhere it's like yeah uh i think that uh like like us we lived kind of really in countryside for a long time you know <laughs> yeah it's uh, not a very much used to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anything else that you want to talk about? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So um, we will uh, pause here.